Welcome everyone here to Smash Evening Show right here on Smash FM here on a, a Friday and here on Australia Day. And of course, uh, let's go to our friends here in the US. It's great to have another music artist on the show. Of course, her name is Susan Hitman. She joins us right now. Thanks, Susan, for joining us. Hello. Good to be here. No worries. Well, obviously, we're at the start of 2024. I'm going to turn back to last year in 2023. How did it all go in the music side of things for you? 2023 was an insane year. It was so crazy. We um we did over 200 shows. I think we I think today like I need to go back and I'm categorizing all of our all of our highlights and all of the the cool shows and everything that we did last year, but um we did well over 200 shows. Um some really cool milestones happened with the band and you know some some different things. So we're very excited and, and going into 2024, it's already like, uh, I, I'm already tripping all over like everything because I'm we're going so fast. So it's it's very cool. We've got a lot of really cool things coming up. Great segue to my next question. You just mentioned you got some uh, amazing things coming up. Anything you, you would like to review for uh, the 2024 year for our listeners? Sure. Yeah, we're going to start... Um, releasing singles off the new record starting in March. Um, so we're going to release in March, April, and May, and then the the rest of the record, the whole record will be out in uh, June. We're going to be at some point recording the new, the, the new record, um, and we're doing actually a fundraising campaign, which is going to go live in about a week or two. Um, that's going to have all kinds of really cool incentives um, so people can be a part of, so you can, you can actually be an executive producer on the record. You can, um, you can, you know, win a, win a custom guitar, actually like that one right there. <laughs> um, just different things get, get like pre-release, um, you know, exclusive content, like, you know, get, get the music before anybody else does get some of the, the, like the, the scratch things that, you know, that, we use in the studio for just kind of laying down ideas. So that's going to be very cool. And then we're also um, launching a, a fan exclusive tour um, again, like very, very soon, like either this week or next week. Um, and we're teaming up with the Texas music office um, and we're going to be launching that and going all over the U S um, let's see what else do we have. Uh, I'm going to be going over to Europe uh, in August to do a tour. So we've got we've got that, and we're we're adding some new dates. So the the full tour should be announced uh, next month. So lots of things. <laughs> very busy, very very busy. Uh, so you mentioned about Europe a moment ago. Was that have you done Europe trips before? And if not, how how cool is that going to be for you to expand your uh, fan base? So I've been over and toured many times um, in Europe and, you know, just various places, you know, I've, I've been, you know, I've done some shows in Mexico. I've done, you know, like Belize and Costa Rica, um, the Maldives, um, gosh, France, Germany, Holland, Switzerland. Um, so to go back over, it's, it's, it's like the first time every time it is, it's always super exciting and it's going to be really cool to connect with some people that, you know, that have seen us before. And um, yeah, it's just, it's incredible. So we're playing a festival in Switzerland and then we have some other dates um, booked, but we're adding a bunch more. So be on the lookout for that. Um, that's going to be super exciting. And then, uh, you know, we kind of, kind of touched on before we went live here. Um, we're, we're trying to set some things up to to come into Australia in 2025 or 2026. So um, be on the lookout for that because that has been that I've always wanted to go to Australia and my fiance's brother lives in Melbourne. So, um, and I have lots of friends, so I'm a skydiver too. So I have so many friends that have come over from Australia to the States you know, to, to, to come and skydive. So I, I, I get to meet people from all over the world, um, through that. So that's, that's very cool. I have to ask for, um, going back home for a moment. Uh, do you have any performances that you got coming up for people that are already in the U S or obviously some of our Aussies are going over to the U S do you have any shows coming up? Oh Yeah. Um, my next show is Saturday. I'm going to be at the Harley Davidson store in, um, like Houston, Cyprus area. It's the Harley Davidson crossroads. Um, so that's my next public show. We've got, um, 
the full calendar at susanhickman.com. And from there, you can find all the details on where we're going to be at. Um, we've got a lot of rodeo shows coming up, too, which is going to be super fun. Um, I'm playing the main stage at Cook-Off on February 24th at noon. So that's going to be a first for us. So we'll have the whole band there. It's going to be super exciting. I'm playing the hideout again this year, which is a huge deal. It's like two, it's like 2,500 to 3,000 capacity tent. Um, and that goes on like right after the main show inside um, ends. And so Lainey Wilson is performing inside. And then right as soon as she finishes, we go on uh, with my band at the hideout on March 9th. So Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. I'm sharing, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Pioneer Houston. Um, I guess how big is country music in, in Houston? Obviously, most of the people know with country music in the U.S., it's uh, the main the main heart is in Nashville. Uh, but um, how big is it in Texas? Texas is huge. I, I feel like... I feel like a lot of people, they, they always think of Nashville and they always think of, you know, the, that kind of vibe and scene, but um, for country music. But the cool thing about Texas and the cool thing about Houston, it's kind of like a melting pot for all different genres. And it kind of gives you the freedom to express yourself and not be pigeonholed into one specific category. So. With me, for my music, obviously, like I'm a country artist, but I like to experience like different vibes and different genres in my own personal, like original music. So like my, 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 my genre is country and, but I have lots of like bluesy, soulful, even rock type of vibes that kind of, you know, transcend through different songs. And so when you listen to a record, it's, it's a little bit, it's, a, it's something for everybody within staying under the, the country genre. So I liked, I like Houston because one place I can, I can kind of cater more to the kind of edgier rock side and, you know, with our set list, and then we can kind of go more the singer song or singer songwriter route um, and then go full on, you know, honky tonk in a dance hall. So there's, there's a lot of freedom and it, it gives you the, the, it gives you the opportunity to express yourself in a lot of different ways and, you know, meet a lot of different people too, that, that like, you know, all kinds of different music. Like a lot of people, they say, Oh, I don't like country, but I like what you're doing, you know? So yeah. I, that's, that's, I love that. It's like, man, it's music. Like it's a whole language and it transcends like genres and, and all that good stuff. So yeah. Houston is cool. It, it is very cool. And I love the Texas music scene. There's a lot of really, really great um, singer songwriters and, and original artists that um, come from Texas. And I feel like, I feel like we've kind of got our own thing. Like we never really even have to leave Texas if we didn't want to. So going back to the music city, um, what makes Nashville special? Um, and have you ever played at the Grand Opry? I have not ever been um, on that main stage at Opry other than a guest. Um, we actually, uh, my best friend and I and a bunch of our friends, we went up for Roger Crager's Opry debut um, back in November. And, um, you know, we did the whole VIP experience and, you know, we got to sit on the stage while everyone performed and all of that. And it was very, very cool. I've been to the Opry many times, but I have never... I've never been invited as an artist. And that to me, that would be probably one of the, the biggest honors in country music. Like that is something that I've dreamed about ever since I was a little tiny girl. Um, Nashville's incredible. Like the vibe and the scene and the people and just literally everyone you meet is a creative. Like they are incredible at what they do. They are great singer songwriters. They're um, they're great at their instrument. They're just great at their craft. And it's it's cool to go up there. Like I go up every every other month or so, you know, either to go up and write or you know to do a video or to just to interact with other people and you know do shows and and stuff like that. Um, it, it's an it's an incredible city. But yes, my ultimate would if if. Whenever they want to invite me to the Grand Ole Opry, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's talk about your music journey. Where did it all start and why did you choose it? Um, I have been very musical ever since I was a little tiny girl. Um, I've been writing songs um, since I was like three, 
years old. I mean, I still have a lot of the, like my little tablets and my little books that I would write stories and poems and, and songs. And, um, when my sister came along, my sister, Sadie, she's three years uh, younger than me. Um, I thought I was the mom. I was like, let me do everything. I'll take care of her. I'll do like, she's mine. I, I thought she was my little doll. Like she's, she was precious. Um, but I would sing her songs and like I, my mom would put us both in the crib, like when she cleaned the house or, you know, whatever. And I would write these little songs and I had my little tape recorder and my little book and I would sing her these songs. And I'm like, okay, what do you think about this? I mean, she couldn't talk or anything. She was a baby, but <laughs> I would just, that's how like we just entertained e each other, you know, like she would, she would giggle and laugh and I'm like, okay, cool. She likes it. <laughs> But um, I started piano when I was uh, five years old, and then um, I got involved in my church choir um, at the Baptist church uh, that I grew up in. And uh, from there, you know, I just, I, I really developed this huge love of singing. I love singing. My mom taught me harmonies when I was little, and I just, I was fascinated by it because it was like a language that it was, it's like, oh, cool. Like I'm, I'm learning something and, um, I'm getting better at it. And, you know, if you apply yourself, you know, like you're supposed to, you, you can do anything that you want to do. Um, I later on learned violin and um, played that in our church orchestra. And then um, I taught myself a uh, guitar when I was, um, I bought my first guitar at 19. So that came like way later, but that's my instrument. Like my guitar is my soulmate, you know? It is, um, it is what I write all my songs with. And, um, I just, I love that, but, you know, as, as far as like professionally starting to pursue music on a, like a, on a professional level, we started that journey, um, when I was about 12, um, I just started cold calling talent agencies. And I, I told my mom, this is what I want to do. And let's, let's do it. And she's like, okay. <laughs> So she, she kind of, you know, I, I, I would talk for several years about wanting to be a singer and be a musician and, you know, being in the industry. And, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. Um, it was just what, one of those things where you, you kind of talk about the things that you dream about and that you want to do, but it's like, I wanted to do it so bad. It's like, if I don't figure out how to do this, like, it's never going to happen. You know, no one's going to do this for me. I have to, I have to, you know, pull up my bootstraps and, and do it myself. So we, uh, we started on that route when I was 12 and really started getting into the industry. And, you know, we got, we got connected, you know, with the, like the recording Academy, like the Grammys and, and that kind of stuff. And just networking with people like here in Texas and Nashville and all that stuff. And so, you know, I, I recorded my first record when I was, um, I started my first record when I was 15, finished it by the time I was 16. And then just, I mean, just started, you know, booking shows and, you know, doing that whole route. And it's been incredible. Like to, to look back at where I started to where I am now, I'm really, really grateful and really thankful of all the things that have happened, you know, even the bad things, it, it, it taught me a lot of things. So it made me who I am today. <laughs> you mentioned before about, you know, you, you had books and tablets, um, from your wrist from the start. Do you still have it? And have you used, have you tried to use any of them for uh, what you've made music for now? You know, that's that's really funny. No one has ever asked me that before. Um, <laughs> so since so since I've been in my house, the one that I'm in now, um, I, I've been here for four years now, and I know exactly where all those tapes are, and I know exactly where all those little books are. And I have not opened them. And I've been thinking about it for a while. I'm like, man, I really want to go back and see if there's any like hidden gems. I mean, it's probably all terrible, but <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that would be very cool to go back and I don't know, like, like put it out like with some content, like some like little baby Susan, like singing in the, like on these tapes. It's a good idea. I think I'm going to take, I'm going to take that idea and I'm going to use it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna take the credit for that one uh, for giving that yeah, idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> well, we're coming over the US uh, uh, to us in the year, so maybe you can bring it out when we come over there. Yeah, that'd be super cool.
you mentioned before, and you always answered this next question, which is what does the music um, industry, especially country music, mean to you? Country music is, there's a lot of tradition. There's a lot of hard work. There's a lot of, um, there's just a lot of really good people in country music. And I, I gravitate to those really real, authentic souls and people that that's, and I feel like this genre is, it, it's just, it's life, it's lifestyle, you know? I mean, it's, it's hard work, it's blue collar, it's, it's white collar even like it's, it's, it, it, it is so many different people and so many different backgrounds and experiences. And it, it's just, it's home to me. And, you know, I, growing up in in the music industry and, you know, experimenting in, in a lot of different genres, like I love singing and listening to all different kinds of music, but I gravitate to, to country music because it's just, it's authentic. And I like to sing my, my soulful, you know, bluesy vibey, you know, vocal things around country music. I know it's, it's kind of funny because they're, they're like, you sing like, you sing like more like the R and B type of cool stuff. I mean, and you know, the first band that I ever was in was like, I was the only white girl, like everyone, like it, like it was very R and B, very bluesy, very, you know, cool vibe like that. And I loved it. I still love it. Like I love singing that kind of stuff. Like one of my, one of my favorite artists is Alicia Keys. And I think she's mm -hmm. absolutely incredible. I love Mariah Carey. I love Whitney Houston. I love, you know, I love just the, that soulful energy from those kind of vocalists, but I love it with country music. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, country music, it, it's home for me for sure. Do you have any future ambitions in country music? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're, um, what we've got going on with this next record, we're, we're going to be releasing these, um, these, uh, singles, um, starting in March and, you know, we, anytime you release your music out into the world, you, it's your baby, right? It's like a little baby, a little baby bird. You're like, fly, fly. You wanted to do the best that it can. Right. Um, so we're definitely hoping that the that the videos and the and the songs you know do well at radio and you know hopefully you know we get another video picked up by CMT which would be amazing. We've had we've had um, music videos in the past that have been you know debuted on CMT which has been you know absolutely incredible and to have that kind of support system in our back pocket is um, invaluable and I really I really do respect that relationship and yeah I, I hope the best for everything that we release for sure but it's a big year we got we've got a lot going on so we're just gonna keep running and you know hope everybody likes what we do so everybody, uh, everybody loves what you do and obviously we we love uh what you do um here as well but uh ha have you had any feedback from you know your fans here in Australia? Yeah, definitely. Like I, um, I'm a, a big uh, spreadsheet nerd and I like to pull data from all the different data sources on like social media and, and like through my, my web portal and all that kind of stuff. So we do have a, we do have a good base in Australia, which is great. You know, um, there we, we have a, a lot of listeners in Switzerland, um, Denmark, Norway, um, France, like I actually, you know, I, I get requests all the time for, you know, can you send some CDs over? Can you send us some merch? Can you do this? And so, and, and I was really excited when you reached out because I haven't really done a lot of, um, like podcasts and stuff like this in Australia. And so thank you for reaching out and kind of, you know, opening the door to more opportunities there. Cause you know, like I said, I really, really, really want to go over there and tour. So, um, I'm definitely wanting to make that work in 2025 or 2026 for sure. So what would be your advice to people that actually get involved in music, especially country music? First and foremost, it's um, if you're, if you're treating it like, if you're treating it like uh, you kind of almost need to treat it like a job, mm -hmm. right? Like you need to put in the work in the certain areas to make your business grow and I think a lot of people don't like to hear that aspect because it's like, oh, I want to I want to get in and I want to be a singer and I want to be on stage. And that's the that's the rewarding part. Right. Like that's the cool, you know, sharing your gift with other people. Um, 
you have to have that drive for sure. But behind the scenes, it is a lot of work. And if you're willing to put in the work, you're going to get out just as much as you put in. So it's a very, very rewarding industry. Um, it's a very frustrating industry too. Um, again, I, I kind of like to lay it all out. Like I, I kind of tell it like it is. I would not be doing anything else besides music. It is hard, hard though. And, um, but it's so rewarding. It's so rewarding. I mean, get, just get out there and learn, like be a sponge, you know, like be, be guarded to the things that you need to be guarded of, you know, be very, very quick to, um, see the bigger picture in a lot of things. Cause there, there's a lot of people out there that'll tell you, Oh, I can offer you this. I can do this for you. I could do this for you. Just be very guarded and just, and at the same time, be open to learning new things and meeting new people. Relationships are everything in any aspect of life. So be very open to relationships that um, you're going to meet a lot of people that can change your whole life. So be very open and be very kind. Uh, let's finish on a couple of lighthearted questions. So which is, do you, have, do you have any embarrassing moments on stage? And then the second part of that question is, have you ever forgotten a lyric to a song and have you have, and how have you tried to cover it up? <laughs> okay. So we'll start with the embarrassing moments I've had spending so much of my life on stage. It's inevitable that things are going to happen, right? You're going to have, you're going to have like all kinds of stuff like malfunctions with equipment or wardrobe malfunctions. Or <laughs> I, I remember, I remember one time, I had food poisoning, right? And I actually, like, I made it through the set, but I ended up, like, this is really gross. I ended up, like, going behind my drummer and throwing up in a water bucket. Right as soon as the show, like, the last show ended, and they were still, like, ending the song, and I, like, I went back behind him, and I just puked my brains out. Like, it was awful. I don't know. Can I say that? I get, I don't know. That's fine, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> but I, and no one even knew that I was sick. They're like, what? But I had food poisoning for, like, three days. It was horrible. Like, the hot and cold sweats, like, it was disgusting. Um, And as far as forgetting lyrics, dude, I've... I forget lyrics all the time. I try to cover them up, but um, it's called songwriting, not song remembering, right? <laughs> so, yeah. and, and it's cool, especially like if it's your own song that maybe no one has ever heard before. Like I'm, I'm debuting a new song. I just kind of like make something up so like no one ever knows. <laughs> but, but me, like you're not supposed to call yourself out and let people know that you made a mistake. But I usually like, okay, that was me. I, I totally messed that up. But it, I think I think the important thing about being an artist and being on stage and you have to be real with people. So I just kind of like, like, here I am, you know? And I used to be so scared to make a mistake, you know, you know, younger when I was coming up, like in the first, I don't know, decade of my career, I was so afraid to mess anything up. But now... It's not that I am complacent, but I just, everyone makes mistakes. Mm -hmm. Everyone is human. And I think if you own that, you're going to be a lot less stressed in life and you're going to be able to laugh at your mistakes. So I laugh a lot and a lot of them at, are at myself. So. <laughs> yes. And we'll finish with this last one, which is for everyone that should follow you, on the socials and obviously head to your website for merch and uh, and obviously the CDs, as you mentioned. Um, how can I go about and listen to your music on their um, Spotify or uh, Apple store? So the hub is susanhickman.com. And from there, you can find me anywhere you get your music, Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora, Deezer, Amazon Music, all the, all the places. I do have distribution worldwide, so you can find me anywhere. Um, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, I'm very active on. Um, I have Snapchat. I'm very rarely on there. So, But you can find out all that information from my website. Um, follow me on all the things. I would love to get to know y'all and interact with you and definitely let you know when I'm going to be over there. So, Well, Susan, it is so awesome to have you on the show. Um, can't wait to uh, listen to your upcoming uh, 
new singles and records that you got coming up uh, in 2024. And uh, and hopefully we'll get a chance to come over to the US uh, later in the year to hopefully get to meet you in person. Definitely. Yeah, definitely let me know when you're coming over. I would love to meet you. Thank you. No worries. And that's uh, Susan Hickman there joining us. And of course, uh, we'll put all the details up, including her website, on how you can... Uh, of course, uh, listen to her music and as well as uh, purchasing uh, her merchandise and as well as uh, the music as well. There's more on the Smash Evening Show right after this. Don't go away here on the 10th year celebration.